What's going on, everyone? Investor here. It's time for my weekly portfolio update. So if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and hit that bell icon. I don't want you to miss any new content that I put out. This past week, I was able to deposit about $550 into the account. So right now, my account is sitting at just under $14,900. As you can see here, $14,872.43. So I was hoping to hit that 15 k mark this week with the dividends I received, plus a little push from the market. However, the push I received went against me, but that's okay. It provided me an opportunity to buy things on sale this week. So with the dip that several stocks are seeing lately, I took the opportunity to add two new positions to the account. More on that when I show you the spreadsheet, but I was pretty excited about the two that I picked up. I received four dividend payments, one being kind of interesting. and I'll cover that in a minute. Maybe you guys can help me understand a little bit on, on what's going on with that. This upcoming week, I plan on dollar cost averaging and I'm going to collect a couple of dividend payments this next week as well. So the week after that, I should be de depositing around $700, maybe $750 or so. I've really been putting in a lot of overtime lately. So hopefully that'll work out. I can get the nice little push into the account, get it over the 15 k maybe even get it over the 16 k mark. We'll see. So stay tuned for that video. That'll be about two weeks from now when that comes out. But uh, let's go ahead and jump over to this spreadsheet, and I'll show you what I've been up to this week. All right, guys. So taking a look at the spreadsheet. You'll notice two new positions down here, being first Colgate Palm Olive, ticker symbol CL, and Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol J&J. &J. So we'll cover this more in just a minute here, but it got to a point, a little bit of a dip there with those guys that I felt comfortable entering a position with those guys. These are ones that I've had on my watch list for quite some time, companies that I don't believe are going anywhere anytime soon and will survive the test of time. So something I wanted to hold on in my portfolio forever. So found a good entry point and got in. So hopefully uh, I made a good choice. I believe I did. Going to stick to it, and we'll just keep adding to that position as we go. But you'll see throughout the week here what I picked up, just one straight share of SCHD. Try to build that up a little bit, try to get that uh, 2023 goal knocked out. Jeppy, this was strictly from the drip. I, haven't, I didn't add anything from my own pocket out of that. Verizon didn't add. Oh, just one more share as well, just trying to hit that goal. Coke here as well as Kraft Heinz. You'll see there's a little bit here on those two. Those were strictly just dollar cost averaging. They're in a little bit of a dip as well. So just trying to bring that down a little bit. ABR, same thing. ABR is in a little bit of a dip. Good buying opportunity now for these guys. I believe they're in the you know low 12s here. I think my cost basis is high 13, maybe 14. I'll have to look at that here in a second. But So good opportunity to, to dollar cost average to bring that one down a little bit. Yield max, I just picked up the one share. We're going to cover a little bit more on Tesla here in just a minute here. But just one share, which is what was available after some of the, the funds that I, I spent everything else on here. So MO, Haltria Group, just a little over 1.1 share of goal for this year. Half a share of Pepsi. And Pepsi had a, a rough go to end the week, especially Friday with the, the earnings miss. I believe it was around $520 million they missed on revenue, but beat the EPS. So, you know, I think the... Pepsi's not going anywhere, and with the, I think it was about five and a half dollars or whatnot, it came down Friday. My my dollar cost is still below that, so I'm still sitting pretty good. So when I got into Pepsi, it was it was down quite a bit. So didn't add any Procter and Gamble. Added a half share of Target. This was strictly again just trying to dollar cost average, even though it's higher, just dollar cost averaging. As well as I believe it's in two weeks the uh, ex dividend date's coming up, so I wanted to get that in. So. The QQQ and Jeff Y strictly from the drip, didn't add any out of pocket. And then the two new positions here with the half share of, this is actually backwards. <laughs> Glad I noticed it. Half share of Johnson & Johnson, and it's supposed to be 1.1 share of Colgate Palmolive. So I'll have to fix that, but it's backwards. So the keep that in mind. Yeah, that's it should be reversed. So moving on. Well, we'll take a look here. 365 history. And guys, please leave a comment below if you think, like, I've been trying to, you know, do a little blow-up window, things like that, trying to expand the, the screen for you guys a little bit in certain sections on this spreadsheet. I know many of us watch YouTube or watch some of these videos on our phones, and sometimes all these numbers and things like that can get pretty small. So let me know if that helps. I'll continue to do it. Hopefully that it, it will help you guys be able to see a little bit more of what I'm looking at so everything doesn't look so small and minuscule on a phone. But leave me a comment if it is helping. If it's not, either way, leave me a comment so I... Kind of know which direction to when I go to work on these videos. So jumping over to the positions. If you guys want to see again just the 365 history again, I'll blow that up. Here, what's green, what's red for the, the last year. 
You see SCHD is back in the green again. Verizon is now back in the red. Kind of flip-flop. So. so we can jump over to the positions here. Again, if you're new, this column here, this is just the percent and the dollar change for the end of the, the day. So this would have been just where I was sitting at on Friday. So I got to find something. Hopefully I can find a way to track for the week or the month. But that's just for the end of day Friday. So, But it will show you kind of where all my shares are. With the cost, the value, everything, adding the dividends back in. And then over here is the overall total position of where I'm sitting. So so overall, you can see 3.35 up on the portfolio. It's kind of dripped down. It was up to 6% not too long ago. You know, and I'm up about $344, $345 over on the account. It's not great, but it's not bad. You know, I'm still happy to see green numbers there. You can see, oh, really been going on sale lately. That position has, has drastically dropped. And so this dollar figure here does take into account the dividends factored back in. So you can imagine where some of these positions would be without the dividend. One reason, again, I mentioned this before that I love being a dividend investor is they can even take some of these numbers that, you know, no matter how deep they are in the red, can turn it into a green just with the dividend. And that's where I'm kind of sitting with several of these positions. So. Hopefully it'll all get turned around. You know, I believe O's strong company. Uh, as soon as the interest rates, hopefully, will fix themselves sometime through throughout the course of this year, this will rebound. It'll come back and be stronger than ever. So now is the opportunity to get into that one. So let's jump over to the calendar. Let me see. I've added a few things in here, guys. I'm always trying to look to improve the spreadsheet, look to improve the way that I'm tracking my stuff. Just give me a better picture whether I'm doing well or not, you know, in my own head as as well as what I show you guys. So leave a comment below if you think uh, some of these changes are for the better or for the worse. So, and I'll cover those here just a quick minute. So this past week did receive, like I said, the QQQY and the JEPY, as well as I got the JEPI and the Tesla. So I mentioned earlier the Tesla was going to cover this one here. So we'll cover it now. So I slated to receive $42.29. Obviously, everybody's a little disappointed with the, uh, I believe it's one of the lower payouts that Tesla's ever had, but it's still, what, $0.40 cents a share? Still great to see. You can see, obviously, it's still higher than what I got last month, so we'll work on that. But the interesting thing is, is, is inside Fidelity is that it's still saying pending, so I actually physically haven't received this dividend yet, and so it hasn't been reinvested yet, even though today was, was the day to receive it. So it's showing up in there just as a pending and i will include a little screenshot here of, of uh, what it's saying so but if you guys can help me understand like i think this happened last week too I, or last month um it showed up as a pending whatnot and i didn't actually see it into the account for like another day or two and being that this dividend fell on the friday obviously it'll be monday or tuesday before i see it before it'll get reinvested so um, let me know if that's happening to anybody else. Help me understand maybe why that that's the case. You know, obviously some people are getting their dividends, some others won't. I know Fidelity usually it's it's showing up as of the morning, but it just isn't physically funded into the account yet. So kind of odd. So I'm still including it on here because it's still showing up as the pending. At least it's it's showing up that way into the account. But again, in an effort to learn, if you guys can just help me understand that a little bit more. Like I said, I'll show I'll put that screenshot up there so you guys can see the exact verbiage or what it's showing me. So. So, so far for the month, $85.42. So I'm slated to receive, according to the dividend tracker app that I use, $104.50 um, for the month. So hopefully that's the case, because I think at 104, it would be my highest month. I think my highest month was December, and it was like 102, if I remember. So 104, that's good to see, right? Moving on up. But you can see the subsequent months, you know, it's going to be pretty decent. I did add the Clorox and the JNJ here. You can see those payouts. I mean, Clorox actually pays out, I think, next week, but obviously I missed the ex-dividend date on that, so I didn't include that in here since I won't be getting paid on that. So, But a couple more paydays here. I should be getting all three of these, I believe, next week, and that'll top me off to the 104, which would be good to see. So, so you'll see the couple new boxes that I put over here. You know, I, I did see quite a few different spreadsheets and different portfolios. You know, I watched the... the same videos i'm sure that many of you guys do and i did like seeing you know okay what's the average per month per day per hour all that you know it just kind of puts it into perspective how things are looking so i kind of factored these in for myself but strictly just for this year i'm not worried necessarily about looking at all this for overall 
you know, I want to see how I'm doing year over year and we'll just compare it as things go. I just want to see my, you know, what's on the screen, you know, kind of thing. So sitting at $87 average per month, obviously with only <laughs> two months here, which is $2.91 per day or two cents an hour. And now I, I hold 18 different holdings. So, you know, let me know if you think that's a good idea. If not, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, let me know. But I think it's a good idea good idea at least something for me to see just visually so i can see the numbers just see what i'm i'm looking at and i did on the hour here the full you know 24 hours in a day because some of these holdings you know matter of fact all of them since they are dividend payers i want you know to be able to make money while i'm sleeping make money in the morning afternoon whatever so all year round 24 7 so that's why i included that i know many people the things i've seen will they'll just do like kind of like a typical eight to five nine to five type work schedule because that's typically what a work schedule is when you're making it per hour but uh, many dividends you can t or t holdings you can continue to trade after the market or before the market or whatnot so that's why i included it that way so like i said the spreadsheets for me it works for me um i just wanted to focus on things for for the way that i like to see them so if you guys have any input any advice let me know put in the comments i, I do read the comments guys i, I try to you know apply anything you guys say into my own here whether it's just researching whether it's adding positions you know there's there's things that i do take to heart so moving on so you see the 8542 so far for february brings the total for the year so far up to 174 which is nice because now i'm already halfway through what i received all of last year <laughs> now you know what thumbs up just whoever thinks that's a good good thing to see i do i'd give it two thumbs up right now so moving on all these are up today. You can see the pie charts for what I hold. You can see the Roth now is looking uh, pretty lengthy here as I add to it and a little more balanced than uh, the taxable account. The taxable account, I haven't added any money in as I'm focused on trying to max out the, the Roth. Once I get to that uh, max out figure, then obviously I'll be putting money into the taxable. But I believe right now I'm still adding money into the 2023 Roth until they cut that off and then I'll do the 2024. So. Probably be a while before I actually add any money back into here. And I'll just let the drip occur on that. So I did add the one more pie chart you can see here just for industry breakdown. I kind of was looking at it and just trying to see where I'm sitting. You know, real heavy on the ETFs and the consumer staples. But right now that's that's fine. Um, you know, I believe there was probably six or seven of each. You know, you can see the with the healthcare, the financials, there's a little bit, you know, into into different sectors, but uh ETFs and, and consumer staples kind of hold the, the top spot. So moving on to the goal. Gonna fix this. Obviously, it's not showing here. It's kind of odd. So I believe, oh, that's kind of disheartening that this just went away. This was here just before I started filming. Um, oh, I think it was only a half a share away from hitting the goal. SCHD was a little over one. Um, these ones here, we've still got quite a while. And in Tesla, I'm still kind of deciding what to do. And you'll notice with only the one share plus what I'm going to get in the drip, really kind of pulling back a little bit on Tesla for now. Um, still going to add to it. I just don't know that I'm going to be as aggressive for now. I'm still kind of trying to see what Tesla's going to do, uh, whether it's going to continue down, even though I try to put more money in so that I can dollar cost average. But it seems like I'm kind of just chasing my own tail, you know, kind of thing. So we'll see what it wants to do here for for a little bit before I keep pumping money and especially when some of these other ones present a, a better buying opportunity, at least in my opinion. So, so we'll count value. We'll get this updated again at the end of the month. So moving on. So first quarters now up to $174. You can see what I received all of the, the quarters for last year. And I'm already surpassing all three of those ready to push past quarter four. And we're still, you know, two weeks going into the third week here of February. So I got a whole month plus a couple weeks to to really shine on, on the quarter. So so again, halfway of what I received all of last year. Then I added these little boxes down here as well. Again, just trying to improve the, the spreadsheet, just help me see things a little bit better. So I've received a total of $529 in dividends since I started doing this. And, and if you're new, uh, January of last year was when I started. So I've only been doing this just over a year. So, which is a $40.72 monthly average combined with everything that I've, I've received since I've started doing this. So these ones I'll track all the time. 
the one on the other one with a calendar there with the, the dividends. That's just going to be for the year. So moving on, we got the new positions added here. See the projected income of where I'm sitting. You see the trend line now is, is moving across. This will bump up to a little over 100 here. So it'll be higher than my December one. So that trend line will bounce right back up. So and then the account portfolio, the value here will go up once I get uh, February ends and we'll add that stuff up. So that's what I've got for this week, guys. So let me know what you think. Thumbs up, thumbs down on the new positions. Again, Col Colgate Palmolive, Johnson & Johnson. I'd love to have them in the portfolio. It's good to finally be able to, to add those. I am looking at potentially two more. Maybe we'll pick one up in the next two weeks. We'll see, kind of just watching them again, seeing seeing what's, uh, what they're going to do. Um, if you guys got any other ideas of anything that I should be picking up, let me know. They're probably something that's already on my, my watch list, but leave a comment. I will let you know. Um, please hit that subscribe button, guys. Hope your week was good. Hope you guys hit some, some good dividends. I will catch you next week. Happy investing.